Michael Hastings, the award-winning um, associate editor over at Rolling Stone magazine, who's broken a bunch of big Pentagon stories, muckraking stories. His car blew up two days ago, and it... It blew up Tuesday. It wasn't in the news till Wednesday. And the police instantly said no foul play, which is always suspicious. The engine got blown down the road. Witnesses said the car caught on fire and blew up driving down the street. And the police are saying the opposite, of course. I mean, they can gun you down now where they have assassins and they'll say you fell and hit your head like Benazar Budo on tape being machine gun. And they said she hit her head. And there's footage of her it was in the fire just being sprayed with bullets. And they're like, oh, she bumped her head. <laughs> I guess Kennedy bumped his head 50 years ago in Dealey Plaza. Or a gnat, a gnat flew over, it was a convertible, and hit him in the head and blew his head off. And if you don't believe that, you're a conspiracy theorist. I mean, nowadays they would just say, the president hit his head today, boom, head blows off. Uh, the car, boom, blows up. And so, before it was in the main news, I was reading, okay, his car ran into a tree, he's dead. And I thought on air, you had to dig, you know, the fact you had to dig, I, I imaged like his car blowing up. And thinking, you know, uh, if the car blew up or something, they might have killed him. But I go, people die in car wrecks, it's the number one cause of death uh, under the age of about 55. So I said, you know, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe he just did die. And then sure enough, he had a big story on CIA corruption coming out. He had uh, he was in contact with WikiLeaks and was about to do a big data dump. And the official WikiLeaks has come out and said they talked to him one hour before his car blew up. And he said, the FBI's after me. They're investigating me. Uh, we've got to hurry up and get this done. Well, they got you done. The FBI should have just brought him in for questioning and shot him in the top of the head like they did the guy that knew the uh, Zarnev brothers. I mean... That's the new thing. No judge, no jury. No, it's just you, the FBI comes to talk to you. You shoot yourself in the top of the head. Bada beep, bada boop, you know. Oh, what happened to Michael Hastings? Oh, you won't see him no more. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at Infowars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. The gang of eight, the El Jefes, say they have a Senate agreement to bolster border security. Uh, the border is wide open, ladies and gentlemen, wide open. I've been down there. I've been all over it. I've been the border in California, Arizona, Texas, New Mexico, you name it. It is wide open. The illegals walk right by. The Border Patrol will just arrest a few a day uh, for PR purposes. They're ordered not to stop the illegals. Obama has already legalized all the illegals by fiat. Because that's what the establishment wants to drive down wages and create a new voting bloc that's pro-tyranny. So we're going to be getting into that. Uh, situation. I think it's newsworthy that Ron Paul was on yesterday and said he would not vote for this bill. But Rand Paul's been making noises like he is. And I understand Rand Paul's a hardcore libertarian, and I respect a lot of that. But you can't if they're all getting free welfare like Ron Paul said. It just doesn't work. I can't go to Mexico and get all this free stuff. So we're going to be uh, getting into that. Huge NSA developments, huge police state developments, huge Google developments. It's all coming up today. And we're going to be uh, taking your phone calls as well uh, coming up in the second hour. But right now, I want to talk about the NDAA and the fact that the Pentagon is on record and Israel and other countries are on record saying they'll kill any foreign national in their own country anytime they want anywhere. Our so-called government goes around the world violating the Geneva Convention, international law, and our own law, bombing Sometimes entire buildings or whole villages just to supposedly get one guy they claim is a terrorist while they publicly run the majority of Al-Qaeda worldwide. So it's a complete oxymoron. Our lives are seen not as cheap, but actually as garbage to be taken to the curb. 
And there's always been political assassination throughout history. And the more corrupt a nation is, the more assassination type garbage you're going to have going on. And the naivete of the public is what is allowing this to go on. Remember uh, Dorner, the supposed cop who was running around shooting people in Southern California. Who knows if that's even true? I don't know if it's true because they lie so much. And they were shooting up innocent people's cars that didn't even, you know, look like him white women. And he's a black guy. This is the type of craziness. And then the police say on six different radios, we're going to burn him down. Okay, burn that cabin down. Bring in the fire. Got it set. It's burning. Good job. We burn him down. And then they said, oh, we didn't say that. Oh, we did, but we didn't mean burn him down. And that sets the precedent to sit there and burn somebody up in a house and say we're going to burn it down and then burn it down and then stand back while it burns down and then say we didn't burn it down. And there's so many cases. Pat Tillman says, I'm going to come home and talk about how we're growing opium over here and actually run Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. It's all fake. I came over here to help my brother. I gave up a $7 million contract. I, I, he wrote these letters back to family. I, I've talked to his brother. He goes, I'm coming back going public. And they're like, no, you're not. Well, how do we recycle this guy? Well, he's claiming he charged a hill fighting Al-Qaeda and we kill him. And they shot him and he fell down behind a rock. And they came over and in front of some of the rest of the squad that had Pentagon hitmen inserted that they were able to then testify and the coroner came out and said that Pat Tillman was murdered. The, the, the army colonel would not lie. He said he was shot at a few feet away with a triple burst right across the forehead. And they shot him and then from 100 yards away that they came up, he, he got up and said, I'm Pat Tillman. They shot at him again. He fell down. He said, what are you doing? And they came up and they executed him and that all came out. They executed him, but then said he died battling Al-Qaeda. They blew up 23 Navy SEALs of SEAL Team 6 that were in on the fake raid. No one on the ship, they've now testified, saw the body of bin Laden thrown in. It's all fake, folks. Now, two of the FBI agents that arrested the younger of the uh, Boston bombing patsies, they fall out of a helicopter and die. More SEAL Team 6 fall out of a helicopter and die. They're killing them all. Then the friend of the brothers who was telling people it was all fake and staged... The FBI goes to question him. He says, they're coming to kill me. And then they shoot him in the top of the head. And then say, oh, we were injured. And it turns out they weren't injured. He yelled at them. So they shot him in the top of the head. They don't even hide it now. They could come here, say I yelled at them. I probably will yell at them. And shoot me in the top of the head. And folks, if they do, they murdered me, okay? And most of you know this. You know, when I was at the BBC a few weeks ago, um, the... Times of London writer, after I had debated him on air, as I'm walking out, I say, look, the NSA is real. They, you know, they call my house up sometimes and tell me what I've been talking about on the phone so I know it's them and they threaten me. And he goes, well, you scare people. You, know, you basically deserve it. I mean, there wasn't even off record a denial of all this. The Esquire writer whose dad was a famous CIA section chief over South Vietnam and killed Viet Dinh. This is all on record. You know, he told me, well, you scare the government. He's got a big, probably, hit piece coming out. We'll see. He's a famous profiler. He doesn't usually do hit pieces. Did the definitive Charlton Heston with him right before he died, all of it. Hundreds of big pieces. You know, we'll see what happens with that. The point is, folks, they're assassinating my character in the media right now. And if they can do that, then they can kill me. And I'm not saying that people with Esquire are even conscious of that or the guy with the Times of London. It's just that the attitude is they're with the system and I'm a scary guy. So, you know, whatever happens, happens because the government's building a better world doing this good thing. Now enter the new article at Infowars.com. Evidence indicates Michael Hastings was assassinated. This is the associate editor of Rolling Stone. Michael Hastings, who brought down McChrystal, who was embedded in black ops and CIA operations in Afghanistan and in um, Iraq. This guy knew a lot of secrets. And he was reportedly, this is now confirmed, doing an in-depth expose that would blow the CIA wide open, is what he told WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks said they talked to him. This is all confirmed. The official WikiLeaks, one hour before, his car blew up driving down the road. And he said, the FBI is investigating me. We, you know, we've got to get this story going quick here. He was getting info from WikiLeaks. 
And then his car, the witnesses, multiple witnesses said, was driving along and caught on fire and blew up. And the engine's down the street, folks. You don't hit and then have the engine go past the tree down the street. And you have the police immediately saying no foul play. And then it didn't get any coverage in the media. Buried. Took a day for them to bury. Oh, by the way, the car burned up. And then you think about the most you know, decorated uh, Navy SEAL sniper in the last 50 years. Chris Kyle is being sued for what's clearly a PSYOP against Ventura. And then some wind-up toy comes and guns him down at a shooting range, a private shooting range. It's actually a, a resort up outside Dallas. And, and folks, there's so many of these deaths. I talked to Gary Webb, Pulitzer Prize winner for his Dark Alliance book, Exposing CIA Drug Trafficking. They tried to discredit him, said he'd been exposed. None of it was true. He had a new book coming out, and he was going to come on my show. I talked to him a few months before he died. And I've talked to his friends that talked to him weeks before. He moved his kids out of his house because special forces would break into it. He'd pull, home, pull into home. They wanted him to see it. And they'd be sliding down the drainage pipes on his two-story house, digging through his house. So he moved his kids out with his ex-wife, moved into another place, and they came and shot him twice in the back of the head. And the police, again, instantly said that it was a suicide. That's what the telltale sign, instantly. Breitbart, oh, well, Breitbart had health issues. They, they always tailor it to look like what happened. He was at a bar with a bunch of people, folks. The police instantly said before one hour, 45 minutes after he was announced dead, dead on arrival basically at the hospital, the police said no foul play. That's always the telltale sign they're in on it. They've been given the order, shut this down. Same things with Hastings. We're going to come back for the next couple of segments with an in-depth expose on this with the actual FEMA and Department of Transportation numbers on 2% of people die in a car, car fire. 2%. My dad was in a car fire with my sister, had a Volkswagen that the uh, gasoline hose came off when I was in high school. Big fire in the back, they got out, car burnt completely down before the fire department got there. 2%, 98% of people don't get killed in a car fire. And his car, again, they said hit a tree and then caught on fire. The witnesses say it's driving down the road and explodes into flames. When you really want to get rid of evidence, ladies and gentlemen, they've got little chip computer programs they can slap right on a car that will then remote control them with their electronic system, with the cars made in the last decade. This is how the CIA does it. This has been declassified. They put you in a car and then remote control it and then blow it up to get rid of the fact they already killed you. Because people survive car bombs sometimes as well. And it's not shaped just right. That's why they also, even if he was alive, like to go with explosive firebombs because they also tend to uh, burn the person up. And I would give it, my gut is 98% chance they killed him. 98% chance. And again, yesterday I said, we don't know. Man just died in a car wreck. And then sure enough, he's coming out with a big story on the CIA. He tells WikiLeaks that basically the FBI is after him. Why didn't the FBI just go to his house? Tie him up, shoot him on top of the head like they normally do. That's all it is, is the mafia. We have a mafia government in this country right now. And you better be praying for InfoWars and yours truly. Because let me tell you something. They've had many discussions about killing me. You can absolutely bet your bottom dollar. We'll be right back. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now we'll remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because today we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use, 
It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. In addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Jones here back live. We're going to get into a special report now. The evidence that Michael Hastings was killed. And now the media will go along when they burn down a cabin with somebody in it, when they shoot somebody in the top of the head during questioning at their house. It's not being questioned. And that's when you go into a real tyranny. They'll start killing thousands of people. They'll start arresting people. And at that point, media and journalists have to start taking precautions to protect ourselves. And then if it goes too far... Things go on the offense. That's the only way to stop things like this. And they want to start a war. They want to have a secret war against journalists. They've been having one with the whistleblowers, all of it. I mean, if they kill me, folks, you know who did it, and you know what to do. I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, David Knight, um, you're here with us. Yeah, one main reason they haven't killed me yet, and they've beat me up and threatened to kill me plenty of times, is they know if they kill us, I have a media organization left behind. That's why you're here, buddy. I've told the crew that privately. You're here, so if they kill me, it continues on. And I want justice. I want reporters there. If they blow oh, yeah. me up, they put me in a room with a hooker. Yeah. Uh, you guys work with me. You know I don't do that stuff. That's right. I, they killed oh, me. Yeah. All right. They killed me. Period. I don't do drugs. None of it. So, bottom line, if this happens, they killed me. This is so obvious. We've got newscasts that are local, but not on the national news, where explosion engine flies down the road. I mean, this is incredible. We're going to get to that. This is a short segment. We're going to have you in the long segment coming up. This is a larger subject of political assassination. But, I mean, this thing absolutely stinks to high heaven. You know, last night when I was getting ready to do the nightly news... I started looking at this, and I didn't even get into why this might happen. I mean, didn't even get into the conspiracy theory aspect of it. I'm just looking at this as an accident, and it made absolutely no sense to me. You know, first you hear, oh, it's a fiery crash, high-speed crash. He hits into a tree, and the car catches on fire and burns. That's the way people typically die in a fiery crash. They, they get pinned in a car that then uh, is, is somehow compromised mechanically. A fire starts, they can't get out, and they die. That's not what happened here. If you look at the eyewitness report, the only one they've got is a guy named Luis Cortez. And he says he's driving down the road, sees a car coming at him at high speed, and it jackknifes. Now, I don't know exactly what that means because jackknifing is typically what you're talking about, a truck doing this articulated semi-trailer. Uh, but he said jackknife and pieces flew everywhere. And you look at the report. That's an had, explosion. Yeah, it's an explosion. If you look at the report from uh, the people that were there, they said that it, it was an ex it sounded like a bomb, shook their whole house, rattled their windows. And then another guy points to the engine that he said flew 50 to 60 yards down from the point that it had stopped. And it makes absolutely no sense that an engine is going to fly out of a car at a right angle to the point that it's going when it hits a tree. Then if you look carefully at the pictures, you see that the car is not really crashed. It came to rest up against the tree. Yeah, it's not even really run into the tree. It's up against it. Yeah, it's up against it. It's kind of beside it. You can actually you can see, see the car's exploded. The engine's flown down the road. And you can see the nose, what's left of the frame of the car, sticking out beyond the tree. So it's kind of like it's beside the tree. After the fire is out, you can see this in this picture from the L.A. Times. And the, the nose of the car appears to be sticking out from beyond the tree. The fire seems to be concentrated around the passenger area. But there's absolutely no way that the car is going to veer off to the left or to the right and uh, well i've seen a hundred photos of car bombs that's what they look like right absolutely absolutely it was a tremendous impact there but the car was not compromised as you would expect when it hits a tree and the fact that the engine flew down the road and the fact that this this one person who saw it said the pieces went everywhere i mean that tells you that it blew up while it was going down the road it did not it did not hit a tree catch on fire and then we're going to get more into this and, and get into the statistics, but tell people about this clip. Uh, this clip that was this is from the nightly news. So uh, we had this last night. It was a local news story that uh, had this on there. And you'll hear the people, the eyewitnesses uh, reports on here. Let's uh, take a look at that clip. Rolling Stone magazine called Michael Hastings a fearless journalist who refused to cozy up to power. His death at 33 came by way of a fire-fueled and explosive crash. It sounded like a bomb went off in the middle of the night. My house shook. The windows were rattling. Oh. I couldn't have written a scene like this for a movie where the engine flies from the car, which was about, I don't know, 50, 60 yards up, right down here to this telephone pole. Un. 
believable. And in the national news, it's no foul play, ran into a tree. They blew that car up. M maybe we should say a car crashed into the Oklahoma City building. Yeah. Right. A car did. You know. Well, and when you look at that picture, the car, the engine doesn't look like it's on fire, right? No, it's been blown that. out. It's been blown out. And it looks like it's going back part of the transmission there. You see the alternator. Well, you're an engineer, but you notice it's all aiming back from yeah. its trajectory being blown out. Well, you're not going to you're not going to send the engine down the road at a right angle to the point at which it hits a tree, even if it hit the tree. But when you look at the pictures again, you don't see the body being smashed up against a tree. And so we looked at this last night. They put the said, bomb in the dash. You can see it right yep. there. So it blew back towards him and blew the engine out the front. That's right. Then the car flipped down the road up against a tree. That's right. Absolutely. Man, I tell you, folks, they could just blow me up and just say, oh, fire. Everybody could be like, oh, it blew up. You know, there's an engine 50 yards down the road. No big deal. Uh, nothing to worry about, Mr. Gover. Just a plastic explosive. <laughs> I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com. David Knight is our guest in studio. I'm Alex Jones. Again, David's an InfoWars nightly news reporter, an engineer, and he's also done investigative uh, reporting in North Carolina. And now, of course, he's been here with the InfoWars team. What is it, six, seven, eight months now? About eight. Yeah, yeah you're doing, eight. doing a great job, man. Thank you. Uh, seriously, when I talk about people know what to do if they start rounding us up, disappearing us, I have worked as hard as I can to be nonviolent. I have done everything I can, and... I, if they kill me, I don't want people to just go out and randomly, you know, be violent. I want you to aggressively get the word out because I'm not afraid to die. I'm afraid of these people running the world because once you give into a mafia culture, it just starts taking over and expanding until there's no society and you collapse like all those third world countries. And then the argument is, well, even if you're not a bad person, work with the evil because you'll have a better lot in life. It's it's it's. It's the disease of our civilization. And obviously, if they start disappearing people in the night, Alexander Schultz and Eatson talked about it, how they burned in the camps later wishing they would have done something. I don't think we've gotten to that point yet, but we need to have a real debate, not just about NSA spying and persecuting the Tea Party with the uh, IRS and persecuting pro-life groups who stand up for little babies. Look how evil these mafia people are. That's all it is, is we're being muscled. They are killing people. And, and I, uh, David Knight covered it last night. A, uh, uh, authors come out you know, with the history, and the New American Magazine wrote about it, about how the Pentagon admits their main tool now is assassination. Well, it's been like that for at least 60, 70 years. I mean, I know a lot of Army officers, Texans, uh, who were in secret assassination groups here in the U.S., and it's not like the, the people I know are something special, ladies and gentlemen. It's giant. Do you understand that? And they have got, let's be conservative, more than 10,000, I would guesstimate, current domestic assassins that are, that are Army, Navy, you name it. When you become a Navy SEAL or Green Beret or any of this stuff, or even Delta Force, then there's levels above that. Okay? And, and those levels are called the dark side. And it's the narcotics, it's, the, it's all of it going on. And these are like made men. I don't know if you can tell the story about your Navy SEAL friend. You were just telling me, oh, you don't want to tell it? No. But I mean, these guys, you know, it's just, it's disgusting. It's not cool, it's not tough, and they kill each other too. I mean, no doubt they did a hit on Chris Kyle. No doubt all this stuff's going on. They will flush you down the toilet in a minute. Remember... Hundreds of thousands of Gulf War troops got the Gulf War illness. At least 50,000 have died in the 20 years since. They knew when they detonated those 200-plus chemical dumps 
that it was all going to rain down and soft kill people. And that's now confirmed for 20 years, the brain stems. It's back on the New York Times last Friday. Again, you do not want to, there's no honor in this. And it's cowardly to blow up this journalist. I know he lied to McChrystal and said it was going to be a puff piece. And in their mafia rules, I, let me tell you, I would not be let in by the Pentagon or something and lie to them. If I told somebody I'm not going to you know, expose any of your confidences, because reportedly that's what he did. Because, uh, I mean, it's not just that. I don't tell people I'm going to do something and then not do it. I'll tell the globalists I'm going to try to bring them down. I'll tell them I'm coming for them. In these mafia rules, this is how they operate. I'm telling you, you mess with their families or you work with them and then lie to them. And that's what Hastings did. You're free game. Now, I'm not saying it's good they blew him up. But it's another issue here. If they can burn down somebody in a cabin, say they did it and then not get in trouble. And they can say that they're uh, you know, going to kill people and blow them up. And people see a bomb go off and kill Pat Tillman and, kill, and then kill five members of Private Lynch's unit who said that she was cowering in fear. They went out and killed them. And I told Lynch through channels. I said, you better go public and say it was all a lie. They'll kill you next, like Pat Tillman. She went public and said it was all a lie. That's the only reason she's still alive, folks. This is how they operate. You mean nothing to them, okay? Now, uh, you've got the floor. Break all this down. Go over the history of it, what we're facing, and then that... Uh, well, Alex, like you were just talking about, the L.A. police, what they said in the uh, case of Chris Dorner, and how they were caught even... You could hear the transcripts, the audio, the audio of uh, the police talking to each other saying, burn it down. They still denied that they burned it down. In this particular incident, we've got the L.A. Police Department, same police department, saying the engine's location is evidence that the driver was, quote, hauling Irish ass and lost control, unquote. And with the engine torn off, the gas lines would rupture and it would start a fire. Now, the engine's not going to go flying, <laughs> no matter how fast you go in a new Mercedes, the engine is not, and parts are not going to go flying. It's everywhere. bolted in. Right. It's ab oh, yeah, I mean, this is not some old rusting Hulk with the engine mounts about to come off. This is a new Mercedes. And Look, I flipped a truck doing 80 before, and the engine didn't come out. Right. I rolled it three times. Right. And and so, the, the but they want to say, you know, they've got a couple of different uh, narratives here. One of them is that it crashes into the tree, catches fire, but then you've got this engine hurled down the road. And they say, oh, yeah, well, the engine hurled down the road is evidence. That, that's how the fire would have started. But you can't hurl the engine down at a right angle to the point of impact. And if the engine hurls down the road as he's going down the road, it's an explosion. So and you have the witnesses saying, boom, it woke them up, shook their houses. Right, right. This is a very rare occurrence, too. As we're pointing out, in FEMA, uh, uh, Department of Homeland Security, they were talking about highway vehicle fires. And there's about a quarter of a million of them a year. Typically, nothing happens. Only in about 2% of these do you have a fatality. Actually, the actual number is 2.6% out of every... Can we document cam that, guys? Sorry, not 2.6%. It's 2.6 out of every 1,000. So it's 0 0.26. So I was okay. wrong when I said 2%. It's 0.26. Yeah. 0 0.26, yeah. So that's... Uh, so it's less than 1%. Less than 1%, exactly. Of course, the, uh, as Darren McBrain pointed out, the uh, probability goes up if you're a journalist that they don't like. Now you were talking oh, yeah, they've about done those studies on politicians. It's not just that they fly more. They do it with other frequent flyers. I saw the statistic like 15 years ago. It's, it's probably changed, either less or more, I don't know, where you were something like eight times more likely to die in a plane crash if you were a politician per capita than other frequent flyers that fly the same amount. That's right. Now, we covered this on the nightly news last night. We didn't go into speculating as to who might this be, you know, because he's really, you know, ticked off a lot of people from McChrystal to he was investigating, he had done investigative reports on the CIA, was working on one for the CIA, and as you pointed out, he had tweeted to uh, WikiLeaks that he was being followed by the FBI just hours before he died. So there were a lot of people wow. in the government, you know, as... as, as Just like out. cop of the year Terrence Yankee in Oklahoma City said, I got feds behind me, and they tortured him and killed him. Mm -hmm. Last phone call to his partner. And as you're talking about this, this assassination... Uh, government that we've got going on. This uh, book is Mark Mazzetti's Pulitzer Prize winning author. The name of the book is Way of the Knife. And what he's talking about in this is the fact that Obama is using not just the CIA, but he's using the military now for assassination operations. That is becoming pervasive. And uh, McChrystal was part of running that. McChrystal was part of, was head of the special operations forces there, right? And McChrystal was also involved in the Pat Tillman cover-up.
You know, he was the one oh, who yeah. was there giving the awards and, and oh yeah, he's tri the uh, he, he he's the main suspect. He strikes again. I forgot McChrystal ran the op and the cover up of Tillman. That's right. Oh, but, so, oh boy. So you know, you've got this situation where you've got this mass, as you pointed out, a massive amount of people, not just in the CIA, but now in special operations in the military, and uh, you've got another author who has written an entire book about how assassination, and it's not just drone assassination. That's something that we look at and we say, wow, that's that's really cold. That's that's uh, amazing that they're just raining death down on people from the air. That's just more visible. The invisible things that they're doing with, this, with all of these special operation forces and with the CIA, that, as you said, has been going on for a long time. But they've but just now, expanded it. They've expanded it, and they don't even try to cover it up much anymore. And you get these ridiculous uh, statements from the L.A. Police Department with situations like Chris Dorner, and again, now with this car accident, it just doesn't make any sense. Well, you know the L.A. system was the beta test. Daryl Gates, before he died, mm -hmm. gave interviews that the CIA in the 60s came in as a beta test, put them in black uniforms, militarize them, make it sexy, spree to core, all the other cops will want to be federalized. So started the uh, SWAT teams? Is in LA. SWAT teams, all of it. They started in L.A., then in New York, and Dallas, of all places, then Houston, taking Taking special ops hitmen and putting them into police departments mm -hmm. so that when they need to kill a CIA guy, uh, like they did down in Houston a few years ago, they pull him over, the CIA uh, section guy gets out, what Carney was his name, and they shoot him right in the head under the helicopter. The guy's hands are at his side, boom, execution. And then you track back that cop, he was in black ops. Mm -hmm. So every major department has these federal hitmen on it now. Man, this, and they're not even feds, they work for foreign banks. I mean, this country's just in so much trouble. And what's amazing about it is, like you said, you can get a video of it, you can get audio recordings of it, you can look at where the engine is, where the car is, the condition of the car. None of the Witnesses stuff saying it sense. blew up. Yeah. And it's like, because I've, I've seen cars crash outside my house, run into a tree, people have been hurt, killed. Everybody's seen it. You hear, it's a big noise, yes. but it doesn't shake your house. Only the explosive wave by high explosive sends that. Mm -hmm. That's right. But even if it had been an explosion because of gas lines, the engine was ejected down the road. The engine is not on fire. Uh, gasoline smoking. doesn't send those explosive waves, though. Right. You talk about a, a smoking gun. I mean, there's no smoking engine. You know, there's, I mean, that, that car was just really engulfed in flames, but the engine is down the road, not touched. So, I mean, that, that. And the witnesses are saying it's driving down the road. I saw one where it's driving and bursts into flames. Yeah, that's what the witness says. He says, I was just coming northbound on Highland and I I saw a car going really fast. All of a sudden, I seen it jackknife. I just seen parts fly everywhere, and I slammed on my brakes and stopped and tried to call 911. That's Luis Cortez. That's the eyewitness report, the only eyewitness report, because this happened at 4.30 in the morning. Now, uh, statistically, it being L.A., it was probably the police that loaded the bomb. Yeah, but that's usually, it's kind of like a turf deal, and they get their payment, and that's how it works. Well, I tell you what, I mean, the L.A. Police Department especially after the Dornan case. They, they just don't, they don't have any credibility. And They're the Gambinos. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, I have had dinner with retired detectives and, and, and people that are basically with the Vikings. You know, they've made movies about that. It's a lot, it's real. And they're just like, of course 9-11's an inside job. Of course they blew it up. I mean, they're like, what do you do? Every, everything's a mafia. I mean, I mean I, I've been to a bunch of parties with them. I know some are famous cops. I mean, it's like, of course. It's all a big joke. I don't think this is cute. I don't want my kids growing up in a country like this. No, no. And it, it is really frightening that they can just do this out in the open and deny it. And no matter how ridiculous it is. Another story that broke yesterday was the uh, TWA Flight 800. A new documentary coming out where they they've got six investigators who were shut down by the FBI when this happens. They arrested journalists. Ago. We needed to get yes. them on who snuck in and got the samples in the hangar. It was it was an explosive, continuous rod warhead. That's right. And in that case, you see the FBI is going out and interviewing people and just not putting down an official transcript, putting down a summary, not showing the summary even to the witnesses to say, did we get it right? I mean, they just went through a perfunctory. There were seven hundred army and navy witnesses to the missile. Yeah. They were having a drill then. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly, and you got you got you got transcriptions of uh, airline pilots. Of course, you know the plane was loaded with Egyptian military officers. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna show you this: the rise of the killer drones. How America goes to war in secret. Michael Hastings, an inside look at how killing by remote control has changed the way of flight. Yeah, these and, are the articles. And here's a drone strike from above. See the wheels are still intact.
Chief Giornetta just pointed that out. Is it possible wow. this guy could have been hit by a drone as sort of a, you know, you're oh, writing yeah. about drones? Yeah. Now we're going to hit you. Yeah. McChrystal's out there. Yeah, yeah that drone strike does look like that. But, it, but generally, uh, I know it looks similar, but that wouldn't, that would hammer the engine down yeah. or, 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 right. or, or maybe out. It depends on where the missile hit. Right. I mean, it's much easier and, 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 and easier to hide. Why would they go with something exotic? Or maybe they'll start having drones out in public and kill people. I mean, it's really a flaunting now of these psychopaths. It, it could be, but seeing other car bombs, the professionals put plastic explosives, and a lot of times with an accelerant and with something that's flammable to burn up the evidence, it looks like a dashboard bomb to me. Right. Yeah, because that was a, a very intense fire. Like, that looks even more intense than that mm -hmm. would have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that car was completely Well, engaged. fragmentation. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Gigi Arnetta brought that to my attention, and I'm like, we got to go. And you guys are talking about this right now, and it's, it's just so he's writing about drones. Yeah. And I don't know that drone you know, strike. I mean, that does. Yeah. That's a drone. Yeah. Let that's me show people crazy. on document cam that are watching on TV. Go, go ahead. And uh, also, I, I sent the guys a link. Um, McChrystal was on that billboard a while back that we uh, yeah that we took uh, covered, and uh, it was. Um, when Colin Powell and a bunch of those guys came here to speak, Ru Rudy Giuliani was the other guy. And um, somebody put, put up their uh, Pat Tillman and uh, the numbers on it. It was pretty crazy. They put a star on the guy's forehead. I don't know. It was pretty, and I just thought that was interesting. Too. Some bad person climbed yeah. up on there and did that here in Austin? I know. I know. wonder I who that was. I can't believe it. But that I was I disrespectful. Think, <laughs> I just think that, you know, people already know the truth about this guy. And people have known it for years, you know. And he's just, he's still walking around scot-free at that point, mm -hmm. you know. How dare someone climb up on the billboard and do that? I hate when people do that. <laughs> you should, we should just let these people kill everybody. Be, yeah, exactly. Because we should all we should all be scared of them too. You know that we, this Hastings thing is going to get a lot deeper, definitely. Well, I don't even think they care now. I mean, no. uh, maybe they. I'm surprised they didn't have a drone fly over in broad daylight and announce we're now going to blow it up, kind of like Dorner. We're going to burn it down. All right, bring the fire, burn it down. Yeah. Well, and the guy said it suddenly jackknife. I mean, that could be from a bomb or it could be from a drone strike. You know, how do these things happen? Actually, when they hit one, they do kind of fly up and do that. Wow. It depends yeah. on how, what kind of missile they used. I mean, are they that well, brazen? If it, at if this it was point? a bomb from underneath that had enough forcing it to sever the engine and send it down 150 feet down the road. I mean, it would it would go up, lift up in the air. Yeah, that sounds that like I mean, that sounds like eight, ten pounds of plastic. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but it, it it doesn't. It's not a situation where it did not crash into the tree. No, pin him in there and then catch fire. That is not what happened. But that's, that's what, what the news what the is going to say. Right. Here's the deal: the if if my car blows up, they killed me. Okay, right. All right, yeah. good job, Dave. All right, we'll be covering this more. Well, one other thing from McChrystal is uh, you, you may remember he was also a big proponent of the universal service. You know, so in spite of his criticisms of Obama that were reported by Michael Hastings that caused him to get fired, he really loves Obama's programs, right? He loves national service, and he hates citizens having weapons. You know, he made the rounds of all the talk shows. He's an anti-gunner. He's yeah. a real authoritarian. Oh, yeah, and he was talking about... Better not talk too bad about him. I'll end up like Pat Tillman. So why do, why do you want to have to have um, military weapons? And what he would talk about would be the velocity of the bullet. He wasn't talking about the fact that Homeland Security is getting hollow point bullets, which are far more destructive to people. Uh, you know, but he was talking about, oh, these military bullets, they travel this speed. You don't need that. And it's like, the speed of the bullet doesn't But these guys are such gun. gangsters illegally spying on us and and alexander the head of the nsa says hey i'm gonna meet with the fbi director and i'll him a freaking beer i mean it's all mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. there's just such a bunch of goons yeah yeah but it, they will destroy this country if they're able to yeah it's just amazing to me as i said when i look at this how the media is just falling in lockstep with this official narrative and you can see the pictures even that the media puts there that contradict what they're saying and they still go along with this. Well, that's department. always the evidence is they're immediately no foul play, ran into a tree. Yeah. And the witnesses all say the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. And again, he tells WikiLeaks, I mean, followed by the FBI. I got I to gotta get this out quick. Uh, uh, uh. I mean, to would be like, the government's following me. Oh, my car blows up. It's like, oh, nothing to see here. Go on to sleep. Well, and, I, and I mean, will the media stand up, you, you prostitutes of the globalist, shelling out your families, even as they kill you? Do you have any spines? Do you have anything? I just don't get it. And I guess the system doesn't even care if we're out here talking about this because they think the general public's cowards and will just roll over that much more to this gangster government. That's right. Yeah, if you look at him going at a high speed, it could be that they made sure that he knew that they were following him.
You know, they could have been chasing him, then blown the car up. Who knows? I mean, we can speculate about that, but what we know is it did not blow up and catch fire because it hit the tree. Yeah. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. You know, as we sit here and talk about political assassination by this criminal shadow government that'll murder a million Iraqis for some no-bid weapons contracts, because they like it. Uh, a global government run by people like Bayer that on purpose puts HIV and hepatitis in the, in the factor eight for people. I mean, it, 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 of course we're all in grave danger and our complying and groveling greases the skids for them. Texas is known for being free because my ancestors and many of your ancestors would stand up to dictators. Instead of cowering in fear, and I just don't understand this living on the knees thing. It's disgusting. And it's all a fear-based society. Now, uh, continuing uh, here, ladies and gentlemen. Aaron Swartz, who was connected into WikiLeaks, fighting SOPA, CISPA, uh, leaking a lot of data, leading the fight. He proposed to his fiance about a week before he was killed. He said, I'm going to beat this in court. I'm going to fight it. I'm very confident. And they came to his house and hung him. Came to his apartment and hung him. Killed him dead in a hammer. And then said, oh, the district attorney that's, by the way, running the uh, uh, Boston bombing cover-up, she drove him to it. I mean, they could have all these media attacks on me right now and say, oh, Alex got driven to suicide. I, I would commit suicide when hell freezes over. Never, 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 never. Okay, and they killed Aaron Schwartz, folks, and they're killing you in the vaccines and the GMO. And you've got to realize it's like the plot of Elysium coming out. Matt Damon's been poisoned, radiated in the factory. His only hopes get to the space station where they've got life extension technology. He's going to die in five days anyways. Why shouldn't he just get up there? I, I realize I have nothing to lose. I'm not lying to myself here. And I love my children more than anything. But they have no future if I don't beat the globalists. That's why they're beyond the globalist reach. Because if they go after them, they're destroyed anyways if this thing wins. The globalists are gearing up to release bioweapons and wipe out almost everybody. What am I going to try to do? Make $5 billion and grovel to the elite? And then try to go join them and maybe I'll be given a pass when all this comes down? I don't want to live in a world like that. I'm not going to sign on to killing all these people. I'm not going to sign on to putting cancer virus and little kids shots and watching them get cancer. I mean, just... Every time I think about the innocence and the aborted children and all the evil going on, I just have no fear. I mean, as a man, I was born to just stand up to the tyrants. So you can car bomb me, slit my throat, poison me, whatever. I am beyond you. I am in Jesus Christ's hands forever. And if you don't believe in God, I choose justice. I choose being a good creature. Not a sneaking, stealing, murdering, nasty, fraud-driven New World Order. And I hope you'll stand with us in history for goodness, okay? Against all the cynics and all the rest of them. I hope that you will stand with us. And I hope you'll promote Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Because I don't want to just do this halfway and get killed for nothing. I know we can change history. I know there's different forces in this world. And so I'm fully committed. So buy the pro-pure water filters at the lowest price. Cut the, all the poison and garbage out of your water. Promo code water, infowarsstore.com. Get prisonplanet.tv memberships to see the nightly news and all the films. Share them with friends and family. Operation Sleeping Giant. Uh, buy the books, the films. Get the new film. State of Mind and get American Dream exposing the Federal Reserve free with your purchase. Infowarsstore.com or link through at Infowars.com or go to PrisonPlanet.tv and sign up and get 11 memberships the price of one and share them with friends and family. And if you have a membership, share it. My only fear is failing. My only fear is that I don't have enough energy at like 7, 8 at night to keep working. My only fear is that I have these eloquent, complex thoughts that I know can awaken humanity and I don't have the strength to properly transmit this info to you. I don't want to fail you. Don't fail me. 
Let's together stand against these king rats. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. We're going to open the phones up in the next segment on the opening of the borders and gutting of the country. We're going to get into jobless claims rise as manufacturing growth slows in the great new globalist economy. We're going to look at some of the mental health bills going to different governor's desks that just allow them to take guns basically from anybody. SARS-like virus has high mortality rate in Saudi Arabia. Privacy officials from six countries request details on Google Glasses. This is turning you into a Google agent going around spying for them. People are, you know, you bring the Connect into your house and pay to have it look through your walls and spy on you and report back to Northcom, uh, which is Global GlobalCon. And, and then, of course, uh, we have the Michael Hastings, the witnesses saying his car just blew up all over the road. They blew him up. He said the FBI was following him. Uh, about two hours, hour and a half before his uh, car blew up. So unbelievable. We're going to be covering that, uh, recapping that uh, coming up in the hour. We just had David Knight in about 30 minutes, breaking the, uh, down the different angles of that. And then we've got a lot of other news. The UN is calling for a global kill switch, and Russia agrees with them. That story is up in the middle column at drudgereport.com. And also, if you click on the uh, top stories uh, tab of infowars.com, it's already rolled off the main page. Uh, that's the only problem with InfoWars. So many of our top stories are not long like Drudge, where more can be up there on the front page. It rolls off, and then it's all just so incredibly, so incredible. It's also super creepy. It's like, man, I better hurry up and expose these people and somehow have a breakthrough and back things off before they come for me. You know, they've already come for my name, telling wilder and wilder lies just at a level I've never seen before. They're so angry. We've got reporters that go and take over their press conferences. If they kill me for anything, It'll be sending Dan Badandi. They might whack him, too, as a message, but probably not. They'd probably come after me if they go after anybody uh, for going and taking over those press conferences. There's a reason hundreds of reporters were at those, and the FBI said, you do not look at his photos, and you do not listen to him. And they all said, yes, sir. And then privately came over and said, we agree with you, but we're all scared, because they know. They'll just take you around back and blow your head off. I mean, this, this country is mafia-run. Government runs Al-Qaeda. And, and again, you've got FBI that investigate child kidnappings and bank robberies. They're the light side of the FBI. Um, Joel Skousen can break that down for you. He's had family in the FBI and, and studied it. Uh, and you've got the, the, the real operators that sit there and basically let the regular FBI do their paperwork for them. That's the same thing at the ATF, same thing at the CIA, same thing at the NSA. You have the compartmentalized criminal group that now has gotten to be about half or more. Skousen estimates the last few years it's past the 50-50 mark. I mean, they've killed hundreds of Army investigators and dozens of Marine investigators who would go expose, you know, stealing and thieving going on. And they'll just shoot them three times in the chest and then have the, the Army coroner say, oh, he shot himself three times in the chest. And if a general tries to stand up, they just kill them. Congressman stands up like Hightower did that time and blow up his airplane. I met his son at Charlie Sheen's house. That was pretty interesting. He said he'd come on the show, and then I think I brought his card back. Did we ever call him? Oh, I just can't handle it anymore. It's just so insane. Why? Why do we let the worst people run everything? Don't people get it's not sexy and cool like the movies say, and that corruption grows? Corruption's like locking up 20 dogs in your house with all the food they can eat for a month and coming back. What do you think it looks like? You'll be knee deep and you know what. And they try to dress it up, gangsterism and all this is cool. It just makes me want to throw up. It makes me want to throw up as the system shakes down farmers and hardworking people and takes poor people's paycheck to give it to foreign banks and has media propaganda tell them in social envy, class envy, oh, we're taxing to get the rich people. It's so sick as they work overtime. The globalists think of us as scum because we put up with all this. Maybe we are. Maybe humanity deserves to be ruled by a bunch of murderers because we don't put up with it. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com.
When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. (laughs) 